Welcome back to The Bourbon Lens with your hosts, Jake and Scott. In this week's episode, we feature Beverly Spirits and discuss a multitude of things, especially their new Beverly Reserve Cash Strength and Batch 2 will be on shelves soon. So if you are in California, Tennessee, and New York, make sure you look at or go over to their website and make sure that is in your um, portfolio of next things to buy. So sit back, buckle in, and listen to our newest episode Beverly Spirits. So thank you uh, today for um, Andy Bornzweig. I got that right. First time ever. I got a name right, right off the bat. He is the founder, um, all things Beverly Spirits. So um, Scott, long time coming. You set this up many, many moons ago, uh, but uh, glad to have you, Andy. Uh, how, how's your How's your holiday season going? Holiday season is uh, off to a great start. Uh, very busy. We just uh, we've released two new products in the last two months, one of which, uh, of course, is the Beverly Reserve, which I know we're going to talk a lot about. And uh, we also just launched a forecast finished expression with uh, the Beverly Wilshire Hotel here in LA. So we've had a lot going on, but it's all good and uh, getting in that festive spirit, no doubt. Yeah, it's it's definitely the time. Scott, I know you you, you have little kids with me. Is, do you feel like you're more in the spirit of the holidays with little kids than you were before you had kids? Because I know I am this year. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've been, I've been listening to Christmas music for, I think, since November 1st. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just, well, because you listen to music now and every third word's like a cuss word or just an inappropriate song. So it's like when you're riding around with two kids in the car, you know, dad life. You can put on Christmas music and it's pretty safe. Yeah. You know, it's pretty safe. So yeah. I would hope I would hope so. I would yeah. hope so. Yeah. No, <laughs> as long as you don't play the controversial, it's baby, it's cold outside. You'll be uh you'll be all right. Or grandma got ran over by a reindeer, and then your three and a half, four year old <laughs> asks, What happened to grandma? <laughs> Whatever. Uh Andy, what what about you? You get do you get into the spirit? Do you listen to to holiday classics uh, around this time? Uh, you know what I mean? I love I love getting into the into the spirit, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly don't have little kids. I've got a little dog. I did get her a little uh, Santa hat slash beanie, which uh, was great for a quick photo op. Did not last on her head for as long as I would like because she thought the little ball on top was a toy for her to play with. So it's been uh, it's been ripped up since then. But we got the photo, and uh, yeah, I mean, Beverly Hills does a great job, especially. Yeah. in the holidays uh going all out with the decorations and you know sometimes in la it's uh it's a little bit tough to get into the festive spirit when it's 75 degrees and sunny outside <laughs> every day like it is you know for the rest of the year uh so that does make it a little bit more challenging but you know that said can't really complain about the weather get some cool nights some crisp air uh perfect way to enjoy a nice glass of whiskey neat. yeah no, you, you can't beat that. And uh, every time I hear like Beverly Hills, like in any type of like beat, I just think of Weezer in my head. And I was like, Beverly Hills. And I'm not going to sing anymore because no one wants to hear that. But that's where I want to be. We'll get a copyright strike. Exactly. That's why I stopped <laughs> singing, paused, said something else, and then and, and went that. But like that's in my head. That was my ringtone in seventh grade. How about that uh, for a flash? Have you, uh, have you been out here? I have. I have been to Beverly Hills. It is... Uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things. Uh, you don't realize how kind of small it is. It's not huge. It's like if you go past, like you can drive right past it um, and and not know you were there. Um, I stopped. You know, did the whole walk around Rodeo Drive type thing. Um, it's cool. I'd much rather go to the tar pits. I had a lot more fun just like kind of walking around there. Uh, but it's it's definitely experience and like car looking. Just looking at the cars was more fun than anything uh, out in Beverly Hills. Like Lamborghini, Merce, like Bugatti, whatever. Boop, 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 boop. It's like there was $15 million in cars that I just walked by. It is uh, definitely a unique place from that perspective. Uh, you know, always, always interesting things and people to see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Beverly Hills is an interesting place because you have a lot of that. And of course, you have a lot of tourists. Uh, you know, you've got the shops on Rodale. But there is also a really tight knit community in Beverly Hills, especially the the you know the working the professional community, right? Definitely, uh, and if that's something that you know it, it's hard to get a feel for unless you, of course, like you're working in that kind of environment. But yeah, a lot of great people, and um, yeah, it's a it's an interesting place. Always, uh, always something new to see and do. Yeah, that was uh, we. I was out there for an insurance meeting, so I I, I work in in 
I used to work in insurance. And so we stopped at a brokerage, um, just like uh, on the other side of Rodeo. And, uh, it was just a regular ass office building, like, you know, nothing fancy. Um, and, uh, you know, I think people have this image of glitz and glamor in Beverly Hills, which, is, which obviously there is a ton of glitz and glamor. Don't get me wrong. Um, uh, but there's just, there's just life there too, right? People are just trying to, to, to make a living and, uh, just like everywhere else, which is cool. And, and speaking of Beverly Hills, like, right, where you all are situated in, in partnership with the Wilshire Beverly, uh, hotel, like, how did that come about? Like, how did, how did you all get your like essence of, of the company and, and how did you make dream this up? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I'm debating how far back to go here, but you know, before, Basically, I'll just give you a bit of background on you know myself and how the company came to be. Uh, before I started uh, Beverly Spirits, I worked for a different whiskey company. It was called uh, Virginia Black Drake's Whiskey, and uh, I went to USC prior to that. Started working in Virginia Black when I was probably 20 years old. Uh, started as an intern, and then I came on full time. And it was really small team, right? There were only really uh, three people, three of us, including myself. So. Uh, it was a great opportunity to be, you know, to learn a lot, right? I got to, I showed up to the office. We'd have flights of whiskey out where we would do blind tastings for different potential recipes. We would taste a lot of other, uh, a lot of other American whiskeys, bourbons, rice. And, uh, you know, I just, I really fell in love with it. I um, kind of learned to be able to identify a bit more of, you know, what I like in different flavor profiles, what I dislike. And, uh, you know, I, yeah, I worked there for almost five years. Uh, I got to see, you know, a lot of how the industry works, interfacing with distributors and retailers and customers, uh, and also got to getting to be in a startup environment and kind of learning, um, you know, learning from that experience as well. So uh, I've always wanted to have my own company. I left there. It's time to uh, time for a change. Took some time off. And then, um, you know, I started developing Beverly Spirits. And, uh, you know, for me, born and raised in L.A., Wanted to capture LA's uh, you know, kind of ethos of effortless luxury, uh, classic American luxury. Wanted to convey that in the branding, in our design. And, uh, you know, for me, it was always really important to partner with, uh, you know, a craft distillery, somebody who has a really strong artisanal background. And uh, I ultimately partnered with Cedar Ridge. Uh, great team out there. They are really doing some awesome things. And, uh, yeah, worked with Murphy Quint to, uh, and had to sell Murphy Quint to make our recipes. Uh, so we launched about a year and a half ago, and as you mentioned, we've you know we've had a great response with our whiskeys at a lot of high venues, places like Beverly Wilshire, which is a Four Seasons hotel, uh, Nobu restaurants, Mastro Steakhouse, and uh, so many others. And you know, for the most part, it's it's really been a lot of me just walking in the door and getting liquid to lips, introducing people to the product, and you know, being very intentional about building real, you know, lasting, uh, relationships, uh, you know, of course, uh, the products getting a good reception and working well within their program, uh, working well with their clientele is uh, sort of the baseline. And then, you know, building uh, a relationship with a personal touch is, uh, you know, something that I really pride myself on. Yeah. I mean, I think whenever the original press release started to come out, I think one of the things that obviously drew me to the Beverly was the bottle, obviously the bottle is pretty striking and I think anybody would want to have something that looks like that on their bar. Maybe it's like a decanter or whatever. But second, when I, when I started really diving into it, it's like this LA company is partnering with an Iowa distillery. And I was like, that sounds so intentional. So I'm glad that we finally have this podcast because now we can hear the story of how that originates. You know, it's like, it's not like you just go out and find the biggest supplier of, of whiskey. And then you're just like, okay, let's, let's partner. But it was like, it sounds so intentional that you partnered with Cedar Ridge. A hundred percent. I think there were a couple of different pieces of that. You know, first at a high level, you know, I really wanted to approach crafting the whiskey, you know, from the perspective of making something unique to us. Right. Uh, you know, of course, you can go to MGP and MGP makes great juice and MGP comprises about half of our blends, Right. But I really wanted to make sure that we were going to put our own personal touch on it. Right. And the other part was, again, you know, even though I've tasted a lot of whiskeys and I've learned about it, I hadn't necessarily worked with my hands to create blends myself, right? So I really wanted to forge a partnership with somebody who does have that background and work with them to really bring the vision to life. And, you know, I've been, I've been very fortunate because Murphy and uh, the whole team at Cedar Ridge have been the perfect people to make that happen. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I 
I first visited Cedar Ridge November 2020. Uh, so, you know, the midst of, midst of COVID. And uh, it was a great experience for a whole variety of reasons. I mean, for one, everything in LA was shut down. You know, <laughs> restaurants were closed. Everyone's masked up. You go to Iowa and it's, you know, we're, we're eating indoors right after getting off the plane. And uh, trust me, that was a very welcome experience uh, for me. But uh, no, I mean, the thing that struck me the most was just the sense of passion and joy that goes into what they do. Every single person I met seemed to be so genuinely happy and prideful uh, and seemed to really believe in uh, and feel a sense of ownership in what they're, what they're building out there. Uh, so I've been, I've been super impressed. And yeah, they've, they've really been an integral, an integral part of bringing, uh, bringing our whiskey to life. Yeah. No, that's pretty awesome. So it sounds like Escape from L.A. was what, what happened in November 2020, right? <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. The the great thing is, what was your favorite thing to do in the cornfields of Iowa? Uh, you know, I mean, I primarily hung out at Cedar Ridge. Uh, you know, Cedar Ridge, I want to say, is about 15 minutes outside of uh, Cedar Rapids in Swisher. But I was impressed with Cedar Rapids. It's a cool town. A handful of great restaurants that we ate at. Uh, you know, I mean, it's always a pleasure to have dinner with Jamie Seafkin, is the GM, or Murphy, or Jeff, the founder. So, uh, no, every time I go out there, it's been a great time. I'm due for a trip in January. It's probably going to be the coldest time of year that I've been there. So, uh, you know, I always joke with that. I'm going to have to dig real deep into my closet to uh, make sure that I don't freeze out there. But I think with the proper amount of cast strength whiskey, we should be, we should be. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's wild how how cold it is on the the frozen tundra of iowa which people don't realize because it's just so flat and it just will smack you right in the face not a place i would say i i I have a a burning burning love to go visit multiple times in a year (laughs) it's funny i mean you know i think they one of the things that they appreciated about me is you know my willingness to you know leave la and go travel and I mean, I genuinely, I genuinely enjoy it. And not only because we're going to, you know, rip barrels open and try different recipes and all the fun stuff, but, uh, you know, I, I genuinely, they're, they're such great people. Uh, and that really draws me to it as well. I mean, half of my family's from Ohio, uh, granted not Iowa, but definitely has that Midwestern sensibility. Right. So that's something that's, uh, you know, familiar to me and something that I really appreciate and, uh, enjoy. Yeah. No, I, I think that's that's pretty cool, and so you know, right? You, you you're one of this pandi- one of these pandemic companies, right? That is creating a name for yourself. Talk to us a little bit about the struggles and the the leverage you had also in that, because I think so many times we look at at the pandemic as oh man, it was just so hard, but also people were adapting in a different way. So. What what were some 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 challenges you ran into starting the business, and then ultimately some of the successes you had because everything went so digital, and we're just able to kind of push it out a different way. One hundred percent, yeah. I mean, you know, I would say first off, I started developing this, you know, around June twenty twenty. So you know, a few months after COVID really started to break out, and you know, one of the advantages, you know, uh, always putting that in context, but one of the advantages was that things really slowed down, right? There was a little bit more room to have, you know, developmental conversations, talk to Cedar Ridge about what our partnership structure is going to look like, take our time to really develop this thing in the right way. Uh, and, you know, I think that was a big advantage uh, for us. You know, there were a lot of challenges as well, right? Especially on the production side, you know, blending the whiskey was one part of it and reaching, you know, kind of the final recipe. And that was all, you know, that's the fun part, Right. But making the custom bottle was a, a big challenge in the middle of the pandemic, right? I mean, you'd have factories uh, closing without notice for three months at a time, and uh, you know, it, it was that that was that was probably the hardest part about it, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, very proud of the the bottle that we made, and you know, our goal the whole time is really to make something that is distinctive that brings you know a nice touch of luxury to the category, but also feels timeless and, uh, you know, respectful of what the category is and the tradition of the category. Uh, so yeah, that, that was, that was the primary challenge. And, you know, I mean, the timing we launched May, 2022, by that time, at least restaurants, um, you know, the entree had started to open up a little bit more, which definitely was, you know, I think kind of a prerequisite to where we are today because, you know, our, we've, we've been fortunate to do really well in those high end, uh, 
restaurants, hotels, uh, places of that sort. And uh, we were able to really get in right at the time that that was picking back up. Mm. Yeah. So timing was, was, was vital to you. And one of the things that's really interesting, and Scott, you've talked about how pretty the bottle is. I, I second that, you know, molds only last for so long, right? And it, it can be a very expensive process to, so did you go to Mexico to create that? Or did you go to Italy? Like where did, where were you getting your glass from? We actually work with a Canadian company who is, uh, they're essentially an, an agency, right? And they have a network of different suppliers. We are getting it over in Asia and, um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, the glass is great. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it certainly was challenging to to get it done in the right way. But after you know, after putting in that hard work of making sure that the mold is perfect and everything uh, is up to the level of quality that we were looking for, it's been it's been um, it's been pretty seamless since then. Mm, nice. Uh, and so I have one other question, right? One uh, as as we dive into the whiskeys, and we'll talk a little bit about the the reserve cask. Uh, first, the new release. Uh, and I know, Scott, you got some thoughts on this one as well. Uh, we'll, we'll be teasing a uh, review here uh, as well. So make sure you, you go back to the website and, and check that out. Scott also has a review on the original uh, Beverly High Rot. Uh, so where did you come up with the concept of boo rot? Like wh- why did you land on this blend of American, you know, straight whiskeys versus going one mash bill or the other? Mm-hmm. Great, great question. Yeah. You know, I think for me, ever since I started really drinking whiskey in a critical sense, I've always really liked, and this has just grown over time, I've always really liked and been drawn to, you know, the bold, spicy flavor of rye, right? Personally, I find it more intriguing, more complex than bourbon oftentimes, but I do feel that sometimes the weakness uh, of rye is that they can be a little bit rough. Uh, a little bit coarse, a little bit hot, right? So sometimes it's not always the most, even though, you know, maybe it's great for a glass, not always something I want to necessarily keep coming back to. And at the same time, you know, I've always appreciated the richness of bourbon. I don't have the, I don't really have a huge sweet tooth, right? So I tend to be more drawn to the spicy than the sweet. But the goal, you know, our, our vision was really to pair that spicy flavor with the rich feel of bourbon to essentially create a more inviting rye, right? While at the same time, not compromising that flavor and still maintaining that big bowl spiciness that is characteristic of, you know, what rye is and should be. So Scott, I know you've spent some time with it. Like, let's, let's talk a little bit about this, this whiskey from your perspective. We're going for the high rye. Yeah. The, the reserve we're going, we're going, okay. we're going we're bold. Jumping first. over to the, going over. <laughs> <laughs> taking a step up. Yeah. I mean, get, get that palate right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was kind of surprised in comparing the two, and that I, I wrote this the review on the the reserve, basically side by side with with the original, with the high rye. I was very surprised by like the fruit notes, especially like on the on the nose, like raspberries and like lemons, and you know, it was like I was like, wow, this is gonna be super fresh and you know refreshing. But then when you you get to the palate, it's just like it's just rich, viscous, like. Not that they don't match, like not that the nose doesn't match the palate, but it's almost it's like it kind of surprises you. Mm. Uh, but it, but you know, like the lemon, I probably am thinking like, okay, that's more of the rock characteristics that I'm going to be getting, like the fresher, greener notes. But then when you get to the palate, it's that proof just brings like a rush of like vanilla and maltiness too, which I was kind of surprised about. Both of the whiskeys have a nice malt characteristic. I, I'm, I'm literally like writing my tasting notes as, as I go with this nosing notes first, right? Definitely fruit forward. I get like this, like tropical vibe with this. Like if you could, I'm going to say rum runner, probably not the best way to go, but like peach, a little bit of coconut, caramel, vanilla. Then you get hit with like a, a dash of cinnamon. Like they were like, Oh, we're going to throw this on maybe, you know, scratch a nut, like some nutmeg, right? Like it, it's got a, a nice spice rack on the back that kind of tickles like the back. Um, so I, I'm excited to, to take a sip of this now. So bottoms up. Yeah. And I think it's interesting, you know, the, the two expressions are different, right? Where the Beverly high rice can be drink more like a rye, it's majority rye grain. Uh, and you're going to get spice or at least I get spice on the front of the palate on the reserve. It is richer on the palate, right? 
you know, it's funny. One of the things that I think really res- has resonated with a lot of people is this kind of like toasted marshmallow sort of feel and flavor on the front of it. Uh, and then you do get that spice on the finish. So it's almost a bit of an inverse experience from the original. Definitely get that cinnamon, that nutmeg. Yeah. Adds a nice bit of complexity, but yeah, I mean, that fluffiness of the reserve is something that is, uh, you know, that's really what captivated us about the blend in the first place and uh, kind of what, you know, inspired us to set it aside and do this, you know, future special release with it. It's interesting that you said fluffiness because one of my tasting notes was vanilla and cake donuts. Mm. It's like, it, it, I think it's, I think the the best thing about this whiskey is is definitely the mouthfeel. Like, it's just, it stays with you. It's just like, it makes you want to take another drink, like figure it out. Like, even if you don't pull out all these little tasting notes, yeah. you know, it's just like, it's just an enjoyable whiskey to drink. And one of the surprising things for me too was like, I get a lot of like black tea. That I, I was I, maybe, maybe that's like a spice component. It is. So I, I the tea note is what's like lingering on my palate, like that herbal tea, like with like a it's they squeezed a little lemon or there's some type of citrus that lingers with it, but like Christmas nuts, like like s- s- cinnamon sugar, nutty vanilla, graham cracker, like almost almond or uh, macadamia, like candy yeah, pecans, perhaps. Yeah, like that. Like it, it's a, it's a mild nut, right? Like that that you're you're having with some some of that sugar like goodness over that you you're like oh these are healthy i'm eating i mean some type of nuts and you're like that ain't that ain't healthy for you bud um uh, so yeah close but not quiet yeah but like the the what's really nice is the so you you talked about the mouthfeel scott like how much it lingers on your palate like that that tea citrus vibe like chills out on the palate for i don't know i'm a minute into the first sip and it's still just like lingering there. So I think finish is an underrated thing. I think a lot of times people are like, Oh, the Kentucky hug. Like, okay, gotcha. Like that's not what a finish is. Like how long does it linger on your palate? Like, is it, is it making you want more? This is a, a drink that, that could make you want more. And it's, it's seventy nine ninety nine. Is that the, the price? For the reserve. That's correct. Okay. And 116 proof, right? I don't think we mentioned that, but 116. 116 proof. So surely doesn't drink like 116. No, I would say more in the in the like mid 100s. You know, yeah, after your fourth or fifth to, one. Just to jump in, I mean, when we, you know, we we came across this blend when we were developing the original recipe for the Beverly High Ride, right? So we would always, you know, we'd always start tasting our perspective recipes at cast strength. Uh, sort of narrow it down from there and uh, then taste them. You know, we always wanted the original to be between 95 and 100 proof, right? And it came out at 96 proof. Uh, but in the process of doing so, when we tasted this blend, Murphy and I, you know, our eyes just lit up and we were just blown away by how inviting and, uh, you know, how enjoyable to drink this blend is at 116 proof and, and really, you know, almost have a hard, having a hard time believing that, right? Uh, you know, it's smooth, but again, it's still got that nice full body to it. And it's just got, you know, it's got the right amount of complexity while still just having such a, such a nice constant richness as well. That really does linger. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, you mentioned you're in a lot of high end bars, right. Uh, and, and restaurants, um, in, in hotels, how, how have people adapted your whiskey into a cocktail program? Do they find it to be price affordable? Is it price prohibitive? Like what kind of feedback have you gotten there? Because obviously cocktail culture as, uh, is huge. Your bottle would be perfect for a bar back tall, long neck. Uh, it's pretty, could be well backlit and, and could be like, Hey, I want that in my old fashioned, right. Or whatever. Well, what, what's been the cocktail reception to either of these whiskeys? Yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of success using it in cocktails. Um, of course it's a whiskey. I love to sip neat and sip on the rocks, but uh, we also love to embrace a bit of creativity and let it shine in you know unique ways. Typically, you know, we've had the most success with plays on classics, uh, different takes on old fashions, uh, Manhattan's, things like that. You know, I think the reserve especially starts to get into a place where it is, you know, it, it gets pricey to put in the cocktail, right? Uh, we're doing one cocktail right now at Nobu Los Angeles. It's a barrel aged Boulevardier using the reserve. 
And that is incredibly special. Uh, they can either serve it on a big cube, as you would typically have a Boulevard yet, or they can, uh, and this is a really creative twist on it, but turn it into a whiskey sour. So they'll take the barrel aged Boulevardier, add just a, a dose of lemon, add some egg white, gives it a little bit of fluffiness, and it's uh, it's really really special and really interesting. Hmm. Interesting. That that's uh, I, I, you know, funny enough, I say my wife doesn't like whiskey all the time, but we had this conversation the other day. She loves a whiskey sour, um, and so it's like I feel like. I just need to start like dosing her with whiskey sours or I need to learn how to make one. That's going to be a far stretch of the imagination, but I have a ton of egg whites from Costco that are, 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 are in the, in the need of being able to create cocktails this holiday season because no one needs six canisters of egg whites. <laughs> Unless they're drinking a lot of whiskey sours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whiskey which, sour party at your house. Yes. Yeah, no shit. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we won't be using Beverly High Rye. We'll be using some some worse liquid. But um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think it's cool. Like the cocktail, the scene and vibe is is interesting. And you, you talked about Nobu. Like you know, I think people know that restaurant really well. And it, it's cocktail culture is so unique and so interesting. I just wish I was good at it. I really wish I was good at it. Or I wish I had time to do it. I, let's let's take this back. I wish I had time to be. In cocktail culture, Scott, you ever wish you you had time to be in the cocktail culture? You, you fat washed some some whiskey. You you are fancy. Yeah, no, I don't really mess with cocktails too much, just on occasion. But fat washing a bourbon, I highly recommend it, especially if you. What kind of uh, what kind of wash did you do? So it was bacon. Bacon. Okay. Yeah. So I literally saw it on I think it was Aaron Goldfarb's. Uh, he did an article on fat washing, and I was like. I'm just going to try this. Just just made some some killer bacon. I was like, this bacon fat, I'm not going to let it go to waste. I was like, let's do this. And uh, it turned out incredible. And like made an old fashioned with it. It was incredible. Even just like neat or on, on a rock. It was, it was wild. Yeah, I, I was curious because uh, we did one. Uh, it was a duck fat wash at a restaurant called Etta here in uh, Culver City. And uh, it's it was really special. I mean, the savory kind of touch to it was very, uh, very unexpected, right? And also, I mean, taking, you know, we already have that nice mouthfeel, right? But adding the duck fat wash really just made it even more round. And it was just, uh, it was great to sit and eat, just like you said, or uh, in an old fashioned, it was great too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll do that again. I don't, I don't really know because it's like, I used a pretty decent whiskey. It was it was RD one, but it was uh, their maple cask. So that's what I was thinking. I was like, ba- bacon, maple. You know that those are two. Good you, you were thinking, you were thinking brunch vibes. You were like, how can I get drunk on a, on a Saturday afternoon? Yeah, it was a three martini <laughs> lunch, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh man. Um. So obviously we've talked about the present. Let's talk about, uh, the intermediate, right? We've talked about how the business got started, but there was this, this, this whiskey that was first released in the Beverly high rot, right? So that was your, your first release. And, you know, when did you have that aha moment in that release to say, Hey, this is, we got something we can really kind of push forward to, to make a line extension, uh, and create, um, more buzz in the marketplace and, and expand your footprint, um, uh, from a, a sales perspective. Yeah, that's a great question. I think it, it, it was probably a combination of a, a few things. Uh, you know, we pretty early on into our launch, you know, we won a gold medal at the San Francisco world spirits competition, followed that up with a gold medal at the New York world spirits competition. In addition to that, you know, we were seeing some good press come through, getting some great reviews coming in. And, uh, you know, just seeing traction at with a lot of our partners, right? So, you know, these were all really encouraging signs, uh, especially for being such a, such a young brand with a new product, right? Uh, you know, I mean, of course, even if you feel great about the product, it's always, uh, you know, there are always going to be nerves involved, no doubt, especially at the beginning as you kind of try to find your feet, your footing. But, um, yeah, you know, I think we felt great about where we were at and, uh, Again, the Beverly High Ride drinks like a rye for the most part. We had this blend set aside that we just really absolutely loved. And I mean, even from the time that we tasted the blend that became uh, the Beverly Reserve, you know, we, we saved those specs, right? We knew that we were going to use it. And, uh, you know, for us, that 
it's nice to have that complementary component in the, the portfolio where, you know, it drinks more like a bourbon, essentially. So it's essentially going to be our bourbon style offering. And, you know, they've, they've worked sort of great in tandem so far. One thing I'd like to say, admirably, you know, you, you are... You are positioning this as like a luxury brand, a luxury whiskey. But when you look at the price, like in today's market, it's not that ultra premium price point, which is the scary part. Like if you, if I saw this bottle on the shelf, I'd think it would be a hundred plus dollars. But I mean, it's 60 bucks. And I think that was what, I think that was what my original review from what I think I had to look it up. It's on Instagram. Uh, originally, but it was from. I think the quote was uh, "worthy of the fancy packaging," and I remember that because it's one still one of my favorite quotes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's sixty bucks, and it's like there's a lot of thought that went into this, and it's sixty bucks. The packaging is like hundred dollar packaging, and in today's world, people are just inching towards hundred dollar price points no matter what. And so I, I think, like again, another thing that I admired about your company and the whiskey as a whole, without even knowing who you were, I was like, look, he positioned this at, at a great price point for multiple markets. I mean, I don't know what shit cost in, in LA. I'm sure it's just astronomical for most things, but 60 bucks. I'm like, most people will take a, take a chance on a $60 whiskey. And I think in this case, they're going to be pleasantly surprised about how flavorful it is. Stag Junior on most uh, bar, like not bars, on uh, like the shelves, you can find it here, relatively reasonable. There, the ch- lowest I found Stag Junior four hundred and fifty dollars. Lowest I found Buffalo Trace was one hundred and sixty. So, LA ain't cheap, people. LA ain't cheap. They'll get you. It is not cheap. It is not cheap, and it goes both ways, right? Where you know you asked about price sensitivity with the cocktails, you know, on the one hand. If we're in Beverly Hills, you know, price sensitivity is not really an issue, right? Uh, but if you start to go outside of different, even part, different parts of LA, right, it's going to be it's going to be a different story. Uh, I mean, in Beverly Hills at this point, you know, and you could probably extend this to West Hollywood and Santa Monica as well. Average price of a cocktail is probably twenty two to twenty four dollars at this point, which is wild. And uh, you know, in the last few years, things have just gotten so expensive across the board. But I appreciate, you know, I appreciate your comments on the positioning. And again, you know, my goal is really to create, you know, going back to this inviting profile, right? Uh, to be able to create and offer something that can be the daily drinker, you know, the bottle that you have on your back bar that you actually want to open and keep keep pouring out of, right? Uh, and that, that was really our goal. And we felt like this was the, the best price point to still, you know, of course, keep it high end, but make it accessible at the same time. Yeah. Well, I, think, I think you get a lot of value. And I admire that about whiskey brands that that position themselves in that way. Well, thank you very much. Sorry, I was over here typing up uh, my tasting notes uh, because I saw Scott uh, how was already had this review set up. I was like, well, I'm not being left out of this review that's going to be posted online. So ultimately, you have your line extension. You're you're two years in, right at the turn of the uh, month here. What's next? That's a great question. You know, the reserve is still very new. Uh, we just released that in October. Uh, I'm very focused on, you know, continuing to get these expressions uh, in front of people, right? Getting people to taste them. Uh, I spend a lot of time doing in-store tastings and going around and, you know, introducing people to to the products, right? I mean, it's been, yeah, about a year and a half at this point. Uh, and we're still very young. So the most important thing always for me is to, you know, build meaningful relationships with our partners or customers. And a key part of that is getting people to taste it, right? So these, you know, the idea for now is these two expressions will really form our core portfolio for the time being. Uh, as I mentioned, we did this exclusive expression with the Beverly Reserve. That's going to be uh, essentially the Beverly High Ride finished in Ruby Port Casks for about five months. And, uh, you know, that was a really special project as well. So, you know, we'll, we'll hope to keep that going and see what other sort of, you know, creative special projects come about. But, uh, you know, my goal for at least the next year or so is really build the Beverly Reserve, build the Beverly High Ride and uh, get people drinking it, get people excited about it. So do you have uh, expansion plans for um, in-market or on-premise uh, opportunities? Are you still kind of just... We're in three places or we're a small company. 
you're probably hoofing most of it yourself um, with the, with that is correct. <laughs> that is definitely correct. So are, are you a one man show? Uh, essentially. I mean, you know, of course I have this part of the, part, the partnership with Cedar Ridge and uh, they're awesome on the production side, but yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, building the company, that's, uh, that's, that's largely, that's largely me. Uh, you know, I have different partners who help me with, you know, marketing, things like that, PR here yeah. and there. But generally speaking, it's it's me in the field. It's me educating bar teams, uh, doing in store tastings, and fortunately, I love it because uh, it's a uh, it's a grind, and there are always you know more places to be, more people to taste. But you know, for now, yeah, we're we're in California, Tennessee, and New York, and uh, the idea is to really build our relationships in these places before we start to think about you know expanding too quickly, uh, and really just make sure that. We're, we're getting people excited about the product in these markets and build the things the right way. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. I was going to say, uh, Andy popped into our email and said, hey, let's do a damn podcast. It's about time. And not, so <laughs> that's all. It's him. <laughs> hey, 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 look, when when we say people go to work, Andy goes to work. Like he he's 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 bootstrapping this. And so, I, I mean, I appreciate that. Like I, I can tell that you're passionate about it and, and like you're going to, try to do everything that you can to make it succeed. And that's, that's really cool. Um, because it's part of the American dream, right? Like this is, this is it. And you're doing it with Americans, America's native spirit. Uh, and people could argue that rye might be America's true native spirit. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll say bourbon is because we're the bourbon lens. Um, and we're in <laughs> because, there's room, there's room, I think there's room for both. Yeah, there's there's room Especially for all whiskey. Especially if they're blended together in a way that is fifty percent of one and fifty percent of the other, and landing in a bottle of the Beverly Hill. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, and 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 that's why this is the melting pot country, right? Because we have all these different types of whiskeys that are available to to many many people. Scott would disagree that the only type of whiskey is bottled and bond whiskey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a curmudgeon anymore. Oh, don't, don't let him fool you guys. He's not changed that much. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. So Andy, we, we got to give you, we got to give you a promo spot here. Like we can't just invite you on talk and banter and all that fun stuff and not allow you to tell people more about Beverly spirits from where they can find you, how they can connect with you, how they can talk to you probably. Um, and, and all of that. Uh, as we we kind of wrap up um, this this first episode, right? We love to have brands back, and and we definitely know that you'll you'll be back on in the future with with, with more more stuff and more stories. So, uh, as we put a bow on this, tell tell everyone where they can find out more about Beverly Spirits. A hundred percent. You can visit our website beverlyhighride.com. We do ship both expressions to forty three states, uh, which are going to be listed on the website. Uh, please follow us on Instagram at Beverly High Ride. And uh, yeah, I always love to hear from people, customers, or you know anyone who's just interested in talking whiskey. And uh, yeah, shoot, shoot me an email, Andy at BeverlyHighRide.com, and that's where you can find us. Uh, it's absolutely great to be on, and I hope this is uh, just the first time and not the last time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you keep putting out that beautiful packaging, uh, and uh, uh, people people will be enamored. It's it's kind of like Bush's baked beans. Roll that beautiful bean footage. You can just say roll that beautiful bottle footage, and and people get excited. Hundred uh, percent. And and, and, and 100%. look, Peyton Manning loves a saucy sheriff. You just need to find him to find a way to engage him. He, he he's a great PR person. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Peyton, oh, come on, you you y'all have never seen the Bush's baked beans commercial with Peyton Manning. He there's three things of of baked beans out. And, uh, the last one is the saucy sheriff. It's literally like a hot dog covered in baked beans. It's a terrible idea. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, uh, but just, just drink good whiskey instead. Exactly. Uh, next thing you know, we'll, I'm on, we'll, I'm on board with that. I second that. Well, <laughs> well, next thing you know, Scott, we did pizza and, and, and bourbon. Now we can do pizza and back or we can do bourbon and backyard pairings. That would be a good mm. one. Ah. Barbecue pairings. Eh, I'm a huge barbecue fan, but burgers, <laughs> hot dogs, chicken breast. We can figure it out. Anywho, Andy, thank you so much for joining this episode. We, we truly appreciate it and, and excited for the future of, of Beverly spirits and, and, and really appreciate you having the time to, to come and join Scott and I. So as everyone, thank you all for listening to this episode of the bourbon lens and cheers. 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 Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. Yep. Yeah.